Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am doing an extreme horror reading vlog. So I recently posted a video. Um, it was a try a chapter extreme horror edition. I read the first chapter of 10 different extreme horror books and picked my favorites to film a vlog on. So definitely go check that video out. I almost puked. It was a wild time. I was sweating. <laughs> I will leave it linked up above down below so you can go check that out. So in today's vlog, I will be reading Into the Wolves' Den by John Athen, The Black Farm by Elias Witherow, What Good Girls Do by Jonathan Butcher, and Endless Night by Richard Lehman. So I will be reading these four books and discussing them and seeing if my predictions were accurate. Um, in that video, I said Into the Wolves' Den was my favorite, then What Good Girls Do, then Endless Night, then The Black Farm. So I am going to see if those predictions add up while I'm reading them. So stick around and fuck around and find out and I will see you in a little bit. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. Ah! What a great start to this vlog. <laughs> Hi. Um, okay. <sighs> Guys. Oh! I just got to the 20% mark of Into the Wolves' Den by John Athen, <sighs> I'm dying. I have the most amount of anxiety <laughs> I've ever had reading a book. I am stressed. <gasps> it's so good. It's so fucking good. Okay, so this book, first of all, don't read this book if you have any trigger warnings at all. Like, if anything triggers you, if you're just one of those people that are just triggered, don't read this book, okay? This is extremely graphic, okay? We're talking, like, violence and things involving children, like, OMG. So, in the beginning of this book, um, these two, well, three girls, but... There's these two girls that are besties, they're 14 years old, and then the one girl's sister is in second grade, so what, is she like seven? Um, and the three of them are like walking home the one day, and this van pulls up, and the one guy is wearing a pig mask, the other guy's wearing a wolf mask, and they're like, hey little girls, like get in our van, and they're like, no, you're a pervert, like no thank you, our parents told us not to talk to strangers, you know, and they're like, mm -hmm, you need to get in the van. The one guy pulls a gun out, oh my god, the things that happen after that, I don't want to spoil anything, but it is so fucked up, Oh. Oh my gosh. Anyways, um, the two girls that are sisters, you know, have been missing. So now we flash over to their parents and their dad is a cop and they learned that their kids, you know, never came home and they're worried sick. So the cop is like, okay, I'm going to go out and look for them. Like you stay here. I'm going to go cruise around the town and try to find our daughters. And oh my gosh, these sick people. If you know anything about me, human trafficking is like my biggest fear, like my biggest anxiety. I have severe social anxiety and I'm like borderline agoraphobic. And one of my like anxiety triggers leaving the house are um, human traffickers. And it's something I keep seeing, like, horror stories on Facebook and shit. Like, now that it's the holidays, like, people are trying to snatch up kids and women. And I am traumatized by this subject matter. And this book is about human trafficking and snuff films. Yeah. There's one scene where the one guy is, like, torturing this other guy and cuts his scrotum open with a box cutter takes his testicles out and force feeds them to him. <laughs> I mean, this is like so disgustingly violent. Oh my god. I don't really want to give anything else away. I'm only 20% in and I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight. Like, <laughs> I am going to have a panic attack. I'm buddy reading this with Mikay. We're reading this together and then we're gonna read 
um, what good girls do next. So, oh my god, I'm so curious. I started this before him, so I'm so curious what he has to say. This is like The Groomer 2.0. The Groomer by John Athen, one of my all-time favorite books. This is like that book on steroids. Okay, so here's the tea. I'm supposed to be working right now, <laughs> but I finished into the wolf's den by john athen i'll pop it up here i finished it i binged the second half of it last night and oh my god you guys this is actually the most horrific book i think i have ever read in my entire life like this is the book that will give me nightmares for the rest of my life i think something you know topics such as um human trafficking sex trafficking things involving children those are just heavy 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 topics and unfortunately this is just too real like it is so real and disturbing that like it's it's fucking me up honestly um i'm going with five stars <laughs> because it was amazingly well done but the content like the subject matter was so horrific and if you were someone that couldn't handle the groomer by him please don't read this book because the groomer is so tame in comparison to this one and they have the exact same plots um except this one you're going more in depth um about the abuse that is happening to these children and multiple different forms of abuse it is disgusting <laughs> disgustingly graphic disturbing and it fucked me up like i have never been so depressed reading a book except for maybe the girl next door by jack ketchum which that is like based off of a true story this is like also it's like not based on a true story but shit like this happens in everyday life every single day and like just look at like things that are happening with like celebrities things that come out about them and balenciaga that whole mess of a situation and i think this book really explores those things going on in the world and it's messed up like i can't recommend this book to anyone <laughs> unless you are obsessed with reading extreme horror you know you know that you can handle it um for like the casual viewer on my channel that's just like i'm gonna read extreme horror please don't start here like don't <laughs> I, I i can't genuinely recommend this book unless you were someone like actively seeking out a really messed up fucked up extreme horror book um and you know if that's your thing go for it like i'm someone that reads a lot of extreme horror so like i could handle it and it still fucked me up and um yeah so like the casual viewer looking for extreme horror please don't read this um there are people that always come back and like tell me that they hated my book recommendations and they can't believe i recommended something like that and it's like okay i'm literally warning you <laughs> don't read it unless you know you can handle it because it is messed up like i can't think of a single book that fucked me up more than this one um yeah yeah mm. i did really like the ending it had like this gigantic epilogue the last like 20 percent of the book was this giant epilogue and i really enjoyed it i think it had a good ending yeah john athens writing is just stunning like his writing is so good that his books are too real it's not like you know um just shock value stuff it like it's shock value but it's telling a story and there's always a bigger picture and his stories are based off of like real life things that he like finds online this story was based off of like some photos that he came across online and it's just messed up it's deep dark stuff you know i get questions like people will message me and be like oh um is this such and such book really that bad like what's the worst thing that happens in this book and then i tell them and they're like oh never mind i'm not gonna read it <laughs> like this is that book this is the oh never mind i probably shouldn't read it book but to anyone that loves extreme horror i highly recommend john athen like please go support him he is amazing if that's what you're looking for mckay and i are going to buddy read what good girls do next we are basically buddy reading all december we are depressed we are looking for um 
hardcore extreme horror and smut this month. <laughs> It's depraved December, baby. So yeah, is <laughs> unofficial readathon that I am participating in because we just decided to read all the same books this month. <laughs> so yeah, so we are going to be starting What Good Girls Do tomorrow, and then we're gonna read a smut book after that where this guy like ends up fucking his stepson or something. <laughs> Please help me. I swear the cops are gonna like literally be called any second. Oh my god. This vlog is pure chaos. It's later in the day. I just got to page 43 of this book. There's only 130 pages, 137 pages. <gasps> oh my God. I am like, the entire time. <laughs> so invested. So we are following this girl. She has no name. We don't know much about her. I don't even know how old she is, but basically like the first chapter, she keeps getting mm, effed by her daddy. And she sees these videos of other good girls and their daddies. And yeah, um, we basically, um, very quickly find out that she has been you know she lives with no name she's never left her room all she's ever known is pain and abuse until now like she's basically been locked in this room getting sexually assaulted her entire life and doesn't know anything um and it's really fucked up like all she knows are like sex terms like when you, you so it's alternating chapters so you're alternating between our main character and then you're alternating between like the one neighbor woman and her husband that live next door and the chapters with this girl like she doesn't know how to describe things other than like sexual terms so the word cock has been mentioned so many times the word cunt has been mentioned so many times like Oh my gosh, there are so many just like sexual terms that she keeps mentioning because she doesn't know how to describe things because she's never like properly learned language. It's like really fucked up because she finally got out of the house, she escaped. And now what is going on? She is like terrorizing this town and I am just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, I can't spoil anything, but there were a couple of scenes that I was like, Oh my god, like so shocked and surprised. It's wild. It's like those cases that you hear where, you know, these kids are like locked up and abused and it's so messed up. It's been a couple days, but I finished What Good Girls Do the other day, and I'm going with four stars. I really enjoyed it. Um, it ended up going this direction where like, I wasn't sure where it was gonna go, and I'm very pleased with where it went. Um, you know, this book deals with heavy topics such as child abuse, and it has a lot of symbolism about abuse and innocence of some people and protecting innocence and just a lot going on in such a short little book. I definitely think some of the gore could have been a little bit more descriptive like sometimes during like the 
fight scenes I guess you could say um I wasn't really like clearly picturing some things so I do think even though it's extreme horror and extreme horror done well I do think it could have even went there a little bit more but it was very well done. I am pleased. I wasn't sure how it was gonna feel and yeah the last like page or so like the last chapter oh my god what the fuck like that ending had me in a chokehold um yeah such a good twist thrown in there and overall I enjoyed so obviously in first place we have into the wolves den and then this is second so i started reading endless night last night i got 30 percent in and like it's okay but <laughs> i don't know i was expecting to like full-blown love it and so far i'm like it's okay so we're following this girl um and she is 16 and she's having a sleepover with her best friend and someone breaks in to the house um and murders her best friend and murders her family and the only one left is her best friend's 12 year old little brother so she runs down to the room to try to protect him and the two of them escape but now there's a bunch of murderers like chasing after them so the stakes are high right off the bat it's anxiety inducing they're like running from these killers and the killers are chasing them and it's just like this high stakes environment and then you know after a while I was kind of like oh my god I hope this isn't the whole book like I'm just running away from killers because the book is 500 pages so then um, eventually uh, we switch to the POV from one of the villains like one of the murderers so you kind of learn like the backstory of what's going on and why they're killing people and and what's happening to him and then you flip back and forth and then you uh, learn like what's happening with the girl and the little boy and you know it, it's definitely like high stakes and anxiety inducing but at the same time I almost want like a little bit more happening um, I'm only 30% so I'm sure you know something else is going to happen but I almost want like something else happening because so far it's just been kind of repetitive like her running from the killer the killers chasing after her and like you're just flipping POVs but like the same thing has been happening so I'm hoping <laughs> like something a little more exciting happens and it's your typical like Richard Lehman weirdness with like the nipple descriptions and like I just I'm not totally convinced that his writing style is my thing like I don't know I want my horror to be horror and nothing else like I don't like when there's like little bits of weirdness thrown in there because it just throws the overall like tone off for me so from what I understand like all his books have a little bit of weirdness thrown in there and like I don't know if I like that I don't know but I mean it's okay so far I don't really have any complaints I'm kind of like neutral so far so I'll let you know once I'm farther and have more of an opinion hi I just woke up um and I just needed to sit down right now and talk about this. I got 66% into Endless Night. You guys, fuck this book. I, I hate it. I hate it. I know. I'm gonna have everyone coming for me. Listen, I'm announcing this right now. I have beef with Richard Lehman. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know that there are people that I love and trust who love his books, who recommend his books to me. Seems like everyone loves this man and I have beef with him. Hold on, my camera's gonna die. I have to change the battery. Hold that thought. Yeah, so I've read two books by him. Okay, this one, well, I didn't finish it. I don't even know if I'm going to. But um, this one and Come Out Tonight. So I read Come Out Tonight and I was like, oh, this is like weird and perverted, but I forgave it because I'm like, oh, whatever. It's just supposed to be like, can't be weird horror you know what I mean so I like forgave it and now I re I'm reading this one and this one is worse to me like it's non-stop objectifying women's bodies and as a woman a woman reader I don't want to fucking read about it you know what I mean like 
I'm so tired of the way that like men write women and I just hate how like I've read two books by him now but other people are telling me that like all of his books are like this. It's just non-stop objectifying women's bodies, talking about breasts, talking about nipples, uh, raping women. Like it's just disgusting. No, I'm, it's not like I get offended over stuff like that because it's like sometimes you know authors are just throwing that in there because it's the villain you know the villain's point of view and they're just terrible people and like that I get I understand it's fine but when it's like every single book every character all the time every male character and then also the main character in this book is 16 years old and he's obsessed with her wearing night shirts with her nipples poking out and like you no know, underwear and uh, like constantly describing what her night shirt is doing like he's obsessed with talking about like her night shirt like falling off her shoulder and like her cleavage and it's just disgusting and then also the 12 year old boy is like a creepy pervert and he's constantly like saying perverted things and it's just like weird like the tone is so fucking weird bizarre and he's constantly talking about this 12 year old boy's erection <laughs> I just it is disgusting and also aside from the perverted things the overall tone of the book like and from what I understand this is also like all of his books the tone is so weird because it's not like high stakes realistic horror to me when you have like these weird little tidbits of like humor thrown in there it's just weird like it throws the whole tone off and just makes everything fucking weird and then i don't care i was like laughing because they're like all at this picnic after you know the the kids get away from the murderers in the very beginning of the book their family like is having a picnic and this kid is acting like his entire family wasn't just slaughtered and they're like oh let's get some hamburgers on the grill i'm like this is so weird and then the girl like this other like woman cop comes into the picture and the main girl is like oh she has like big breasts i wonder what my dad thinks about them Ugh! I would never, I would never look at a woman's breasts and wonder what my dad thinks. This is disgusting. I actually, I'm ID enough. Um, I've honestly been like skimming through it just to get through it because it's just, I hate it. <laughs> I fucking hate it. it's a couple days later I'm bringing the snuggie back I mean technically I don't think this is a snuggie it's like a comfy because <laughs> it's a big hoodie but if you know like if you've been here a while I used to vlog in this snuggie like all winter long last year <laughs> I got my coconut yogurt delicious it's literally like pureed coconuts um, but yeah I haven't been reading as quickly the past few days because I'm dying again of my ovarian cyst. Um, it got bigger, so now my pain is really, really bad again. It's like pushing on all my organs. Literally the worst fucking pain I've ever had in my life. It's so bad. I don't even know like what to do. And doctors are just like, oh, just leave it alone until it gets too big and then we have to do surgery. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm dying. <laughs> um, yeah, so in case you're curious, I finished uh, Endless Night. I technically skimmed it because I just wanted to know the ending. Like the ending was pretty good. I liked how it ended, but the book, I, ugh, whatever. I gave it two stars in case you're curious. I just don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> then I started 
The Black Farm by Elias Witherow. I got to page 170. Um, there's about like 310 pages. So it's a pretty quick read. Um, I'm hoping that I can finish this. Today's Friday. Tomorrow I work at my therapy job. So I'm hoping I can finish this between tonight and tomorrow night. So this book is basically about this guy and his name's Nick and his girlfriend Jess. They decide to um, end their lives. They take a whole bunch of pills and they die in the first chapter of the book. But then Nick wakes up and he's like, where the fuck am I? He's like chained up, like people are being tortured. And here he is basically, it's kind of like purgatory. So he is basically at the Black Farm, which is where people go after they end their own lives. So they're basically like, okay, this is the Black Farm. You can choose to feed the pig. And if he likes how you taste, he'll send you back to heaven for a second chance. And then if he doesn't like how you taste, you go to hell, something like that. And then um, if you don't choose to feed the pig, you have to stay here on the black farm forever and ever and ever. Like each time you die, you'll just end up back here. So he's like, what the fuck? Like I have to stay here and try to find Jess. Like his whole mission is to try to find his girlfriend. So now he is trapped on this black farm and they have this thing called like the pig, which is their god basically. And the pig tried to like make its own breed of, I don't know, its own race basically of pigmen. So there are like these mutated human pig people running around and it is crazy. So more stuff is happening. I don't want to spoil anything. That's just like the main gist of what the book is about. And I like it so far. I think it's a really interesting concept. It's a really interesting story. I really like the plot and kind of what is going on. And um, yeah, I do feel like this book could be more detailed. Like so far, I don't think it's over the top, like gory or disturbing to me personally to me who reads a lot of extreme horror like this could be more extreme you know what I'm saying like a lot of stuff is like mentioned but not really described in depth um, I know a lot of people did say that this was like really messed up and disturbing to them I mean I can see that to me I'm okay so far so I don't know take take that with a grain of salt you know what I'm saying so so far I'm almost like if you're a beginner to extreme horror this might be a good one for you so far we'll see how the second half goes but um yeah even though things aren't as descriptive and like over the top disgusting I really appreciate the like story development and the plot development because for me like I always need that perfect balance of okay this is disturbing and disgusting but I really like plot I don't like things that are just overly disgusting just to be disgusting I'm like it has to give me something you know what I mean so this is definitely giving me plot and substance. Okay, hi. So I finished The Black Farm and okay, here's the scoop on this book. I liked it. I did um, like it. I'm gonna go with four stars. So this book to me, the knower of all, just kidding. Um, to me, someone who like reads a lot of uh there's something on this hat okay to me who reads a lot of extreme horror and like has really no trigger warnings and like doesn't really get offended by much um except for Richard Lehman apparently <laughs> um to me this read more like just regular horror um I feel like you know there were some 
disturbing scenes there were some scenes that were like supposed to be extreme horror i think but to me this read more overall like a horror book with just like some disturbing graphic elements to it like there were some things where you know it's like people were being abused being sexually assaulted you know etc and it's like oh this person's head just got chopped off and there's blood but there wasn't really any like descriptions like in depth of things so to me I feel like if you are a beginner into extreme horror um, you're looking for horror that's you know a little more graphic than typical horror books usually are say like a Stephen King book for example I feel like this would be a good book for you to like get introduced into uh, like more of the extreme horror side of things. Am I making sense? Um, so I liked this book. I, I did like the plot and the storyline and I thought it was like something new and different, something I haven't seen before. So I did enjoy it. Um, the ending? I don't really know how I feel about the ending. It was a little bit out there for me. It does have some, you know, speculative elements to this book, just like the overall theme of the book, you know? Um, so I don't know. It, the ending, I don't know if it like 100% made sense to me because it's out there, you know? But I did overall enjoy the plot and the story so I'm gonna go with four stars I, I enjoy it I recommend it um, and yeah I think if you want to get you like you dip your toe into extreme horror but you're not ready for like into the wolves den by John Athen definitely check this one out um, so I would say my ranking number one into the wolves den number two what good girls do number three the black farm and number four endless night yeah, that's my ranking and I'm sticking to it. So three out of the four I liked and I recommend. And overall, this was a pretty successful video. So yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.